In its most simple form, an injection mold is two blocks of metal pressed together by an injection molding machine that is filled with molten material to form a plastic component. But depending on your component's design requirements, this simple concept can become complicated very quickly with multi-cavity tools, family molds, three-plate molds, and even molds with side actions, unscrewing features, stripper plates, undercuts, not to mention all of the different materials that can be used to build an injection mold. So in this video, we're going to cover all of the different types of injection molds, including the advantages and disadvantages of each type so that you can make an informed decision on your next injection molding project. As we already discussed, the most simple type of injection mold is a single cavity tool or single cavity mold, where two blocks of steel are pressed together and filled with molten plastic, creating one end component per cycle. Before we talk about the advantages and disadvantages of a single cavity tool, it's worth briefly discussing the different types of materials that can be used when building an injection mold. The most common steels that we use at Crescent Industries are S7, H13, 420 stainless steel, and P20. There are many other materials that can be used to build an injection mold, and each has its own advantage and disadvantage, but the material used to build the mold, and specifically the hardness of that material, will impact the class of your mold, which determines how many cycles it is warranted for. So if you want more information on injection mold materials and which one is best for your project, then you'll want to check out this video where we compared a lower cost injection mold to a higher end injection mold. All right, now that we have a basic understanding of the different tooling steels, let's get back to the mold types. A single cavity tool can have lower upfront cost when compared to its multi-cavity counterparts, but single cavity tools can still have those more complex mold components that we will talk about later in the video. But overall, single cavity tools are a great option if you're unsure of your expected quantities or simply have a component that you know is only going to have low quantities of around a thousand parts per year or less. Obviously, on the flip side of that coin, a single cavity tool is not going to be a good option for high volume productions, and over the life of that mold, each part will have a slightly higher cost since each cycle of the injection molding machine, again, is only producing one component. Now, your next option is a multi-cavity tool, which works in the exact same way as a single cavity tool, but instead of producing one end component, a multi-cavity tool, as the name suggests, is going to produce two or eight or 200 end components in some extreme cases per cycle. Obviously, the advantage advantage here is being able to produce parts more quickly, and the overall cost per part over the life of that mold will be lower since you are producing multiple components per cycle of the machine, making this a great option for high volume components. That being said, a multi-cavity tool obviously has a higher upfront cost due to the additional raw material and engineering required for this larger tool set. Multi-cavity tools usually produce multiple identical components, but we can also build what's called a family tool set which has multiple cavities producing different components made of the same material. A simple example of this would be a part with a top and bottom half made of the same material that you could mold at the same time in a family tool rather than having to make two separate single cavity molds. The language we use for family tools is a one plus one injection mold, for example, meaning one cavity of each different component. But again, in extreme cases, you could have a family tool that is producing five unique end components per cycle. There is an additional engineering cost required up front for this sort of thing, but overall, it's likely more cost effective than producing multiple single cavity tools for each individual part. All right, so every injection mold in its most simple form falls into a single cavity or multi cavity tool. But beyond having two blocks of steel that are pressed together on one axis, some parts have more complex geometries that require more complex mold designs in order to make the manufacturing process possible. First, we have side actions for the manufacturing of components that require lips or overhangs, for example. Since a traditional mold opens again in one direction, these features are impossible without the use of side actions, which allows features of the mold to move perpendicular to the axis of the mold open. 
and that ultimately is what allows a part with a lip or an overhang to be ejected from the mold. Here at Crescent, we also offer a very unique and proprietary molding solution when it comes to side actions that we call a master action frame. So if you want to learn more about master action frames, I'll reference you to this video where we talk all about master action tool sets. Another commonly used mold feature is three plate molds, which in addition to the two halves that we talked about earlier in the injection molding process, it will have a third plate that is floating on rails in the middle of the two halves. Again, this offers the advantage of more complex part geometries, and in most cases, a three plate mold is used to separate the part from the runner during the ejection process. And in the end, that can help improve the manufacturing efficiency of that part. Similar to a three plate mold, a stripper plate mold is used when a knockout pin or blade is either inadequate or would cause damage to an end component during part ejection. The stripper plate again rides on rails between the two main floating halves of the mold, allowing for consistent part ejection without leaving marks on the end component from the ejector pins. In some cases, we may also use a hand-loaded insert, which is exactly what it sounds like and is placed into and removed from the mold during each injection molding cycle, which comes with an additional cost since an operator is required to perform this action, but can allow for part geometries that would otherwise be impossible to produce or very costly to engineer using some other mold type. Lastly, we have injection molds with unscrewing cores, which are used for parts requiring molded threads. Instead of manually unscrewing an end component that has been molded with threads around an injection mold core, an unscrewing action is coordinated with the injection molding process so that as the mold opens, this unscrewing core spins and unthreads itself from the end component. Again, this more complex tool does require more additional upfront engineering and and setup cost in this case, but can allow for more efficient manufacturing, meaning a lower per part price over the entire lifetime of that tool, especially when volumes are high enough. There are certainly other types of injection molds, but these are some of the mold types that we most commonly use here at Crescent Industries. And as dedicated tool builders and injection molders, we are uniquely positioned to help you decide which mold type is best for your plastic component. So if you'd like to learn more, or if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to us using the contact information down below because we would love to help learn more about your injection molding project and how we can help bring your parts to life.